A very important feature has just been added to NativeScript. Core Modules 6.5.9 is out now, as of yesterday, and thanks to a community member, we're now able to resize images on the device. This is actually a very important feature, and I'll explain why in a minute. Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Alex. If this is your first time here, consider subscribing to the channel where you'll see native script tips, tricks, and tutorials. And in this case, I've got a piece of news for you. Coming out with a 6.5.9 release, we've got a community contribution that adds image resizing right on the device for both iOS and Android. Here's the pull request, and you can see that it's pretty straightforward. It's actually a really neat feature that's implemented in both iOS and Android, and it doesn't have that much code at all, but it's so important. And who is the committer here? Well, let's take a look here. Ken Sutherland. Who is Ken Sutherland? He is a community member, just like you, and he saw that this is something he needed, and he thought maybe everybody else will need it as well, so he just created a pull request. Boom, it got accepted. Ladies and gentlemen, the new native script. All right, so I'm gonna show you a demo now of what this feature actually does. Here I've got a plain native script with TypeScript app running, and I've got my native script core dependency, and that's the latest 6.5.9 as of right now. I'm gonna pop open our main page .xml. This is where the UI is defined. And I'm also gonna pop open main page.ts. And let's close this out so we have more space to work with. All right, now in main page, I'm gonna add an image tag here with a source attribute. And source is gonna point to a resource. And I happen to have a picture of a ball as a resource file with this application. So there's a picture of the ball right there. Now this image is actually pretty large. And what if I wanted to create a thumbnail for this image? This is one of the use cases here is, is being able to create thumbnails from very large images. Phone cameras these days take really huge pictures. We are able to create thumbnails on the fly. Let me show you how to do that. So I'm gonna give this image an ID of IMG. And by giving it an ID, I'm able to access this component in code from the code behind file, which is right here, main page. In the navigating to handler, I'm going to use the page and then get view by ID, and I'm gonna get that view called IMG, which is an image, so I'm gonna cast it as an image. You've seen me do this many times on this channel before. I don't need to explain what get view by ID is by now. If you're new here, and if you're new to NativeScript, check out some of the other videos here. Or if you wanna get started, check out nativescripting.com. There's some free courses there to get you started. Links down below. All right, so I'm gonna save that off as our IMG, our image. Now I got a hold of the actual element that's in markup. I got a hold of that in code, and I want to assign some image data to that image to display it. Well, the way you would do that in code is you would use an image source. An image source is something you'd assign to an image to display the image. So let's grab an image source, and we can use the image source class for that. And that's something I imported already at the top here. That's coming from native script slash core. There it is right there. And image source allows you to get images from many different places. You can get it from the internet, you can get it from the file system, and you can get it from the resources. Right now our image is stored in resources like I mentioned before. So here are some options. These are static methods on image source. You can get it from file, from resource, from data, base64. So if you have your image encoded as a base64 string, you can use this. We're gonna use from resource sync. So you have asynchronous methods, which are just from resource, for example, or from file. And then you have synchronous methods, and they have the word sync at the end. All right, so from resource sync, and now we give the name of the resource, which in our case was ball. So I'm gonna save that as an image source const. The image has an image source property. I can set it to image source. And if I save this and we take a look at the application, you'll see no difference. We still see the ball. It still looks exactly the same as it did before because we've just basically set the source of the image like we did in the beginning of this video. So where's the cool part here? Where's the resize part? Here we go. Image source has a new method on it and that's the resize method. This is a brand new method. You can pass it a max size, which is the maximum pixel dimension of the resulting image. 
and this works on both iOS and Android. Let's say I pass in 100. Now I know that this image is not actually 100, it's way more than that, but this will limit the maximum height or width depending on which one is larger, I believe, to 100 pixels. So I'm gonna set that and then let's take a look at what happened. Look at that, our image is now pixelated. So what's the point of this? Well, the point of this is that now there's a lot less data to display, a lot less to load. So you can load lots of images now and it'll be really quick and fast to show them. Very good for displaying small thumbnails. Now that we've scaled this image down, it doesn't make sense to display it as large. So we would actually probably adjust the image dimensions. We would say the height will be 100 and image width would also be 100. And there it is. So this tiny little image right now that you see here is actually not only scaled down by height and width, if you just take an image and scale it down by height and width, it's still gonna take and load that full size image. But now this image is actually scaled down to proper size for that, for those dimensions and proper resolution for those dimensions. I'm gonna take out the image height and width here and we'll go back to the original size because the effect of this is more visible on a larger image. And I'm gonna set this to 20. So now you can see that things really start to break apart. So you'd need to scale this down to a really tiny image in order for this to actually look like a ball in the field. So here's another benefit to doing this. If you capture an image with your phone camera and you wanna upload it somewhere, some of these images are really huge, like 50 megabytes. By scaling it down using the resize method for the image source and then uploading it, in other words, you're downsampling before you're uploading it, if you don't need such a high quality, high resolution image on your server, you're saving all that bandwidth and saving time. So it'll happen really quickly and it'll also save space. Not that we really care about space anymore these days, but still, if you're doing a lot of this, if you're a Facebook or a Twitter of the world and you've got lots of thumbnails to handle and lots of images to process, this will help you out. And now you don't need to trigger native APIs or include third-party libraries to do this for you. So thank you very much, Ken, for this contribution. Before we go, though, there's one more little trick I'd like to show you. Check this out. If we set the resize to a really small size, like two, well, we get this nebulous green thing, right? And what does this nebulous green thing represent? Well, it represents the average colors in that area. And you can use this as an effect too now. So you can create backgrounds out of foreground images on the fly. And the background colors will match the image that you have in the foreground. You can have a sharp image in the foreground and a nice blurry background generated from the same image. I have another image in this app called Colors and I'm not gonna resize it right now just to show you what that image looks like first. Here it is. It's just a square with different color corners. I created this in Photoshop real quick to show you. And if I do resize this, and provide the parameter to there, then we get this really nice little gradient effect going on. It's like a blurry background with gradients. Really neat looking. So while it's not the intended use of this feature, it's a happy accident and it can be used for effect. And that does it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. If you're not subscribed yet to the channel, click on the subscribe button. If you got questions, hit me up on Twitter. I'm at Digitalix over there, and I'll see you in the next video.